Okay, so where would I start to create my syllabus? Where would I put it? Build content. Now, build content, all I'm doing is hovering my mouse over the chevrons. It gives me the drop down area. And I said I could create an item, which is like a document, but they've already set up an option for syllabus. So I'm going to scroll down, click on syllabus. This is similar to eight. I mean, you put in the name, which is required. So I'm going to put in syllabus. And now I have the option to create a new syllabus, which is from scratch within Blackboard using their template, or use existing file. 99.9% .9 of the time, you already have one. You just want to upload it. So I'm going to say use existing file. It's going to ask me, where is my syllabus? Is it on my computer? The other option is to browse my content collection. Now, this is going to give me a good lead-in for content collection. Eventually, within probably the next couple of semesters, you're going to, we're going to start using content collection. Content collection is an area, and it's in the control panel as well, that will give me buckets, I guess is what I could, buckets for a course, my personal content, all courses that I'm enrolled in or our organizations. So if I have a syllabus that I teach this class for three semesters, nothing really changes, but maybe, you know, maybe a date here or there. What I could do, instead of attaching it to the course, I could put it in my attache case, and it stays with me. This course is going to go away at the end of the semester. My attache case stays. So if you have um, present PowerPoint presentations that you use from, from semester to semester, syllabus that you use from semester and sem you know what I mean, semester to semester, instead of attaching the syllabus from my computer, I'm going to use my content. Okay? So I'm going to go back up here and I am going to select Browse Content Collection. When I get to content collection, it opens up the content area. And if I scroll down, this is all this stuff I have put up there. And I really should be um, a little bit more organized, but I was playing with this. I mean, you can create folders. You can make it very organized. I just haven't. Here's my syllabus. Put a check mark in there. Click submit. Is this stuff like an online? Um, it's like a cloud. Folder. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what it is. So once I've added from the content collection, it has, you see it actually has attached it there. Click Submit. And now I just have to, um, come on, wait for it. Okay. Now I have the options I need to, whether, to allow whether the students see it in the normal time frame, yada, yada. And then I can go down and click Submit again. And there is the syllabus. Now, I know this is my content because I see it's a little XID. And that's just giving you a heads up that it's there, but it's, you, you didn't download it from your computer. Okay. And notice that what happened to the little box? It went away. It's just another place and easier that you could just put stuff. And like I said, if you've got the nice thing is, say you do two or three sections of a class. Um, Say so you have one class, but you have three sections that you're teaching. The syllabus is the same for all three sections. And if you didn't put it here, you would have to attach the document in this one, attach it in or upload it to that section and upload it to the third section. Well, what if you changed it or altered it or edited it? You'd have to make sure that you edited that document in every single place. Here, I go to my content. I edit it. And as soon as I upload it to my content area, it filters down through wherever it's attached. So that's one of the, the nice things. So when I look at this uh, file in my own computer, mm -hmm. if I modify it, mm -hmm. I have to go back and delete the old one? No, no, you don't delete it. All you do is upload it again. Just upload it to your content, and it replaces the old one with the new one. Refresh your screen. And then your student sees the revised one. 
And I think, let me see if this is my revised one. Um, hold on. Because I did that like two or three times. I uh, don't think I did. So you don't need to go back and edit it. I, right, you don't need to go back and, and edit the old one. It will, once you edit your original and upload it to content, it will update itself and filter that update down through the, um, each of the courses or places that you've got it listed. And that's the same, like I said, I've... I'm using the example of syllabus, but it could be a PowerPoint presentation. Um, it could be, um, you know, a document, something like that. And I don't have it on the new one. Okay. Um, but that's kind of interesting. Same steps. If I want to create an assignment, I just go down to the menu assignment. And I've got some there already. But because this is an assignment, where would I start my new one? Oh, well, you can create it. Or if you have, like my assignments, I, I have a Word doc. Mm -hmm. So I upload them to the item. Okay. Are they graded, though? Um, the discussion forms are graded. Okay. But you don't put up assignments where the actual assignment has, uh, like, a point value, three points if the student submits it. Or if it's, if it's something that the student has to return, like you want them to, um, for instance, submit a one-page paper. That, that to me is an assignment because they have to do something. So if I wanted to do another assignment like submit a 10-page paper, where would I go to start? Create assessment. Create assessment. Go down to create assessment. Go scroll down to assignment because it's not a test. And then the create assignment page comes up. Again, I've got to um, do a name. So, mm, uh, say a, go away. No, I don't want to use sticky keys. Um, five page paper. I can't think. Type in any instructions to the students here. And I don't need to attach a file because they don't need to do anything but go into Word, do a five-page paper. I want to grade this. So if they submit it and I want to give this, so I don't know how many points. So let's say I'm going to points possible, 15 points. I want to make the assignment available. This is different. This is in answer to taking away the digital Dropbox. Remember I said when you take something away, you've got to give something back. In assignments in 9.1, you have the option to allow unlimited attempts or a number of attempts that says, okay, I know that, you know, I want you to do a draft first. You can submit it to me. Let me take a look at it and then you're going to do the final. So instead of allowing them just one attempt, I may set this to, I'm going to give them a do-over. So I'm going to say, okay, you can do two attempts. You will see both those documents as the instructor. You can look at them both. You can give feedback on one that says, okay, this looks pretty good, but you want to you know, go back in and research this a little bit more. So you can give feedback on one, and then they can do that and submit the other one in the same assignment. If you allow a single attempt, and the student tries to upload something and they receive an error, and I'll tell you when they're going to receive an error, is when they try to upload an assignment or an attachment in Internet Explorer. Still does not play right. As soon as we make it play right, Microsoft goes in and updates Internet Explorer, and they start. So pass the word around also. Tell your students, don't even bother. Just go in, use Firefox. It's a, especially for test exams um, or attaching and uploading assignments. Use Firefox. If you've never used track number of views, please do so. Because I will have students that will swear and be 
and swear and be dogged that the browser went down. I never was able to get into Blackboard. I never saw the assignment. And I've gone in as an instructor or helped the instructor look, and they had track, chain, uh, track views on. And we saw a student was logged in, the date, the date they accessed the assignment. And so it's a running total. So it's, you know, it's, it's just a way that you can track how many times they looked at that page or looked at that assignment or downloaded it. So it just gives you a track number of views. So I'm going to, I personally, I would track number of views. Gives you some statistics. And you can put in a date due. So if this is due on Friday, you can put in August, whatever Friday's date is, and a time. So let's say this is due on August 23rd, and it is due at um, 11.30 PM. You can make sure that all students get the same assignment individually. Or you can set up an assignment for just groups of students now. And you can um, grade the entire group, or you can grade individuals within that group. So once I click Submit, it is now part of my Grade Center. And this is where I change the color. See? Submit to Page Paper. So it's just changing the color. If I go to Grade Center and Assignments, I can now see, as soon as, I hit, as soon as I hit Submit, I've got a column in my Grade Center for that assignment. Okay. Now, the other piece of it is, as instructors, do you know how your students see the grades? You've seen this, how they see it? Not how you see it, how they see it. You see grades through the Grade Center. Students don't see the Grade Center. They never will. But if I am a student and I want to find out my grades, I would go to Course Tools, scroll down, and I click on My Grades, Mine. This is what your student sees. They see this page, and under My Grades, this is the title of every assignment that you've set up that is set up to be graded, I should say. Not every assignment, but graded assignments. If you have details, and when I say details, it kind of, you know, like instructions or something like that, they would click on that. They would get a little bit more detail on that area. If you set up the assignment with a due date, they would see the due date. They would see last submitted, edited, or graded. So on August 13th at 4.50 a.m., and I am up at 4.50 a.m. playing with Blackboard 9.1 for the last sum over the summer. I submitted an assignment that was a graded assignment. I see, as a student, this green exclamation point. That tells me that my assignment was accepted by Blackboard. However, my instructor has not graded it yet. Okay. Once you grade it, then I would see under edited or graded, this is the date it was graded. That is the grade that I got. And that is the possible points. And if there were any comments that you put to the student, it would also show up there. They can drill down somewhat to get a little bit more information on the details, the points possible, the date it was created and the calculated grade. Want just a tad more detail? We'll give them the instructions that was part. So that is what students see. And discussion board in Blackboard <coughs> hasn't changed a whole heck of a lot. Um, but to get to a discussion board, you can just click on the discussion board area. Normally, if you're in the class initially, you would go to this page and it would be blank. You would go up to Create Forum. And the Create Forum is the, basically the start of your discussion board area. 
forum kicks it off. You ask the question as the instructor. I want you to research, um, I don't know, mechanical engineering techniques over the years, and let's discuss this, you know, with some findings. So go out and research it and put something in the discussion board. So I go in, I go to create forum, I give it a name, say research mechanical engineering. Once I do that, go down, I have the same options. I can make it available. I can enter date and time. I can allow um, editing. And I can also allow subscriptions. Has anybody used subscriptions in discussion board? No? OK. If you have a large class, you've got 30, 30 students in your class. Normally, I would go in every single day and look at, did anybody post new? Did anybody post new? If you set this up to subscribe, to allow members to subscribe to the forum, what that will do is if, if one of your students or five of your students submit anything new in the discussion board, you'll get an email that says um, from, I think it's Blackboard Administrator, I, you've got three unread posts or something like that that comes in the email. And then you can see. You don't have to monitor and sit on the discussion board. You can also go down to the last, and you don't have to have a grading, but you can put points possible and grade your discussion boards. <coughs> Once you get your forum, you can, and this is an optional thing, you can kick it off with an initial thread. You can put in something to get it started so the students kind of have an idea or have something that they can um, get started on. You would just basically do the same thing. Let me go back up here. Go back to discussion board. So in the discussion board, I created a form, forum. And the forum is what did you do over the summer? On this one, the only thing I did was create the forum. The student created the initial thread and responded to my initial question. Click on that. And here's his post, or her post. I went to Blackboard World for Blackboard 9.1. Yay! So it's just a way offline where students can communicate back and forth. You can have them research. They can share. They can do some things in the discussion board. It can be graded. It doesn't have to be. Um, and that's it.